Can music be taught? Mm. I mean, I don't know. I mean, everybody, like, teachers can offer things and, you know, like, um, maybe show the different worlds so that they can actually explore. But we always find our, like, we all have our own. Own beauty that we see, mm. like we always want to document things that we see beauty in, and it's just from our own life and experience or own taste. And who can correct that? Who can come say like the the beauty you see is not beautiful? So, what would it feel like to move to a completely different country, <laughs> and where you don't speak the language at all, and study a music that you didn't grow up with? And then all of a sudden discover there there's a completely different music that you've fallen in love with and that you want to write for. <laughs> well, that's what Ji Hae Lee has done, and now she's become an innovative force uh, in the New York scene, and someone that I really uh, admire how she's fused so many different musics together and has caught my ear. And so I hope that. You get a little snapshot into knowing Ji Hae Lee a little bit better, and also understanding her music even more. Here's our podcast. I am here with Ji Hae Lee. I'm here with John Diversa. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for for joining me and and for sharing with with the audience. Uh, we're going to talk composer to composer here. I know. So I w- I want to let everybody know. You know I I discovered you if that's the right word just with my ear, and I forget where I heard your music now because it's been just long enough. But I heard some music on a random playlist on a streaming platform somewhere. And it was really, what is that, and who is that? Mm. And it doesn't happen all that often. And I heard a lot of different influences and different fusions of of musics coming into one music in a in a vocabulary that I was familiar with, which was big band. Mm-hmm. And and I immediately, you know, I had to go say, okay, who is this? And wow, and. And so shortly after that, I contacted you and said, you know, we got to get you down to the University of Miami and and uh, uh, and have you share your music with us. And and I wanted to get to know you a little bit better and and just uh, share composer to composer, just like this. Mm-hmm. Um, so so thank you for coming, and <laughs> and I want to know a little bit about uh, your. First, let me ask you this. Okay. I'm so interested <laughs> to know about musicians and what their what makes their engine run. Hmm. And and so I would frame that by just saying, what are your values and your intentions when you create music? I would say the inspiration, the the most important inspiration is life. Hmm. You know, we all have different situations, different lives, but we all are human beings. And even though we have different situations, struggles, but the feeling that we have, the pain we have, are similar. We will sometimes lose our loved ones. Sometimes we will fail on things. Sometimes we will have some happy times. So I wanted to document my life, which can be universal. I'm I'm talking about my story because that can that's the story that I can be related. That, can, I, that I can relate to the most, but I don't think it's only my story because we all are human beings and share the same ups and downs. Um, so yeah, when I have some thoughts or or imagery or um, some stories that I want to talk about, I want to find the musical equivalent and just transform the stories or um, messages or my feelings into the music because that's what I do yes yeah whether we all are conscious of it or not that's what we all do in Mm -hmm. in different ways that's very true yeah 
And but the more conscious we are of it, mm-hmm. you know, the the more um, we can experience it and, and observe it, and mm-hmm. then experience it and observe it and experience it both. Right. It it feels like I'm not myself, and just you know, seeing my seeing my life, like kind of like objectively, and write about write about it, like in music. Mm-hmm. And isn't like every experience? Basically, it's experience. No matter what it is, whatever the emotion is, like you said, it's mm-hmm. it can be love, it can be pain, it mm-hmm. can be joy, it can be uh, the full gamut. But it's basically we're here to have that experience, so we can so we can sh- share that with the collective, basically. Very true. Yeah, and just give that back, yeah. so we can experience ourselves. Yeah, that's our mission. In this body, in and, this planet. <laughs> yes. So, so let me share with everybody. So, so we just met today. <laughs> we just met today, right. uh, and we've only been conversing for maybe I don't you know, know twenty minutes. Yeah, twenty minutes or mm-hmm. so. And you know, th- there's an understanding of where we're both coming from. Right. One of the th- things that I told you that I've noticed immediately seeing you work with the band and just having interacted with you a little bit on a phone call and through emails and these things is your uh you're on mission <laughs> you're you're you have an integrity about what your mission is here mm. to do and i would love for you to share and i would like to hear again um what that what that mission means to you and what you think it is in, in your sharing well i mean you know we all are ants like we are small you know, creatures in this in this universe, and I mean, like I I I always believe in this this fact that whether it's big or small, whatever I do, I am doing my own small role. Like let's say I make an album, and then maybe hundred people listen to it. Still, it's my mission, and still, um, I am meant for creating this album for that precious hundred people. Mm. So that's like whatever I do, I always remind myself that it's not about me. It's not about my name, my work. It doesn't have to be thousands of people loving your music. It's just, I'm just, you know, making my, like, I'm just being humble, humbly doing my best on what I am given to do. So... Mm. I don't know if I can actually do small jobs in this planet, like, you know, while I'm living. I'm grateful, tr- trying to remind me that, like, that fact every day, because otherwise we'll all be miserable. Because let's say you're Dofit in Houston, there's a Mariah Carey, you know? So if you really think um, your self value with the quantity, mm. It's not going to make you happy. I don't know. It makes me think of, I never met Beethoven, (laughs) (laughs) but I know that there's a, he said that his late string quartets were Mm -hmm. not written for his time. Mm. And I don't, when I, when I read that, is I don't feel it coming from a place of any arrogance at all. It's just what it is. Mm. These this set of music is for a set of ears that are not ready mm-hmm. to understand it right now. Or it, maybe a better way to say it is not in resonance with it right now. But there will be an energy. He was saying later that you know a, a generation that does understand it, and so mm. this is for that time. Mm. You know, so so whenever you're creating, it's you're going to find the resonant match, you know, the audience to the creator always, no matter how many people it is. Yeah, but you know, um, you 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 have a tremendous career and you put out lots of albums. Um, of course, I knew about you, your work, and when I was asked to come to the Miami, I'm like. I almost couldn't believe it, you know, like why, why on earth he would bring me there. Um, but just like you said, the music actually, if my music, if my creation spoke something mm. to you, happy and um, right. yeah. Yeah, the resonance is a match. <laughs> yeah, no, I brought you here because I want to be around badass people. <laughs> so, so, you know, and the other thing that I've noticed about you after mm-hmm. knowing you all of... Uh, 
you know, a little more than 20 minutes mm-hmm. <laughs> and, and beyond. Um, I've, I've said many things in our interactions and you always come back with a very genuinely positive response. You mm. see the positive outcome in, in whatever the challenge may be. It's and, call and response because mm. you give me the positive energy and then I react as positive energy, you mm-hmm. know? <laughs> That certainly helps, perhaps. <laughs> but I, I, I would venture to guess that you carry that with you. Oh, you know, because thank you. I can see that you create things from that. Mm-hmm. You know, it's it's here are the challenges. Okay, let's go after it. This is going to be fun. Yeah, that's a spirit, <laughs> <laughs> right? Um, I mean, and and to have come to to the states, you've been here. What you said, a, a little well, more than ten more years. More than a right? decade. Yeah, eleven years, I would say. And you came here from Korea, mm-hmm. and. And you came here not speaking English at all. Is that correct? Yeah, I was very nervous when I ordered coffee. <laughs> like, oh, yeah. should I, what should I say to get my coffee at Starbucks? <laughs> Seriously. I, I, I believe it. <laughs> and, and also, and, and coming into a world, I, I know first you were singing, mm-hmm. and then you got into uh, the jazz. And Well, you're already in the jazz world, but then into the big band world, which is a very male-dominated genre and so you're a woman coming from another country learning a language i mean you've got to have an inner strength and know what you're doing and have a positive outlook about what you want to experience in your life to be able to Hmm. do that you know what i'm thinking is you know the game (coughs) excuse me Mm -hmm. (coughs) you know the game like uh, when you enter when you enter one step forward another world kind of like you know, is revealed. And then you enter another step and then the other world is revealed. Mm. I I feel like I'm living in that game. Like, it's not that I had so much inner strength and then I came here and like, I'm going to do it. I'm going to, you know, make this work. Never thought that way. I'm just, okay, let me try this little thing and then that thing. And it kind of like, you know, opened up for me Mm. and then I'm here. And it never really was like, oh, I'm going to be a big band composer. It all started from one question: What's 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 gonna be a like what what's out there? Like what is the thing that I didn't see in my life? Because um, yeah, I I knew that I would become all sort of musician at a very young age, but I'm not from musical family. The only instrument that I had was toy recorder. I didn't have piano, unfortunately, and I would play all the cartoon music on my recorder. So that's why awesome. I developed my movable dough. Mm. I don't have perfect pitch because I only had the recorder. So I, I had to make it all C in key, uh, key in C. Mm-hmm. But anyways, um, I only had um, piano lesson for six months when I was about nine. And that was it. That was, that was the only education that I had. And um, actually in Korea, I never really heard big band music, to be honest. And um, I, didn't, I didn't even know that art form big band music exists in the world but one one curiosity like if i go to berkeley what would i see i want to be a composer but i don't want, i don't know in what form i could be or where is the mentor that i can actually you know ask some help i didn't really have so to me the Berkeley College of Music was buffet like oh let's see what kind of cuisine i would like the best and then i went there and then I one day I was just walking in the hallway and there was a rehearsal going on, the big band. Mm. I'm like, oh, the lush sound, that energy and the beautiful harmony and rhythm. I'm like, I was in love instantly. Wow. And then I would go sit in the rehearsal and like and just mm. check in, check out and what's going on there. And um yeah, I just found a jazz composition and I declared as a major. And the story goes on. Well, I, I love that idea of the analogy of the game <laughs> where you could open any door yeah. and they're just different, right? And it's so much fun. You know, if you know about your life forever, like what's the fun part? Well, that, that's what it made me think about because there's a certain uh, courage that it requires to actually be playful. There's a, there's a certain uh, fearlessness mm-hmm. that creates and that allows the playfulness. Right. And then the playfulness will allow the positivity and the positivity will allow things to actually be created. 
Yeah, that's that's very true. If you want to be playful, if you that's why I put that piano in front. Of me. <laughs> <laughs> Let's say you are you are so negative about your future. How can you be playful? Like, I didn't really know what will happen, but I knew that the world will be kind to me. Mm. That's the belief that I have. The world will be kind to me, regardless what happens. Say that just one more time, <laughs> because it feels good. Say it again. The world will be kind to you, mm. and to me, and to everyone. It is like a mirror, right? What you what you give to it will come back to you. Mm-hmm. Um, it makes me think of of. I'm not gonna gonna sp- speak to any anyone specifically, but there are people that I know that have had. <clears throat> Dramatic challenges mm-hmm. and and hurts and and struggles and those come from their upbringing, from their family, from economic, you know, political strife. I mean, all of these things mm-hmm. that uh, you know. I have my own life that I've experienced, and I'd have no idea what it's like to to live someone else's life. Mm -hmm. And yet there are people, when I look on the outside, and I see these struggles and what they've gone through, but their outlook is playful, strong, um, and fearless. And they're just here experiencing life, and they, no matter what their circumstance, they find a way to just see it for what it is and move through mm-hmm. and affect in a positive way and be of service. It's incredible to me. But if, if, if we can take that little seed, no matter what our circumstance is, and make that fruitful, you know, we've, we've really got something. Yeah, I mean, if you have struggles, like from your upbringing, it's not your fault. Mm. It's just given to you. It's not that you did something and then you're punished or something. But, you know, when you are a baby or a teenager, there's, so, there's almost nothing you can do about it. But when you are grown up, you can you can't have certain control of your life and of your perspective. And then that perspective, I can say, make, you know, huge difference and... You live once, you, are, you can't live your life, you know, being salty, you know, forever and ruining your future. You can't control your past, but you can certainly for the future. I, I think that's the joy of, of being in this life, you know, because it, it is, this is a world of polarity, <laughs> you know, because the, the, the depth of your pain will show you the depth of your love. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and the depth of your challenges will show you the depth of your capacity to overcome. Yeah. You know, you, you have, it's both sides of the candle. Also, you know, it's in a way it's a blessing because I really think that you can only have sympathy on something that you also went through. Mm-hmm. I never really understood what it is like to have a sick person in the family. Mm-hmm. But once my mom got sick, I'm like, I, I regret all of my reaction to my friends when they lost their father or mom, like, I really didn't, of course, I tried to understand what it is like, but I don't think I really understood. But once I experience it, yeah. I know, I know yeah. what it is. So in a way, having, having lots of, lots of emotion, including, including all the joys too, it only uh, enriches you as an artist so that you can, write for write for the people and then write about that stories yes so then let's talk about that <laughs> how do you take taking our discussion back to the beginning you take all of these experiences of your life that you experience in your body mm-hmm. they're in you you absorb them and then you put them in your music right and i know that right now you're you're combining uh, traditional Korean percussion instruments and 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 influences into uh, you know jazz language, and I don't even know all the other projects that you have that you're dreaming up right now, and then all of the the you know so you're bringing in cultural and and geographic 
influences all in, in musics, and then also you're bringing in all these life experiences into your music, um, and you're conscious about it. So is there a process w by which you're trying to pull all these things together to find more structure in how you compose? Um, like I say, like, you know, the game, game story thingy. And at the beginning, I really wanted to talk about, um, just, you know, like, um, how difficult, um, life it was back in, back in Korea, like mm. 19, 30, 40, 60, even 70 for women. Mm. So I really wanted to, um, talk about my grandma's story, my mom's mm. story. Cause my grandma, she became an orphan at, at the, at, at a young age and she married to my grandpa she would have to she would go um just cross the frozen river with the with the what is that straw, straw shoes and then her her child on her back and you know to get the tinder to warm up the house and cook food so that was the life for her at the age of like i don't know 18 16 17 18 so and she she went through wars or poverty and you know like colony, all that thing. And then now she's seeing some K-pop. So we have like kind of like extremely, extremely um, uh, dynamic dynamic history in Korea. Like for that the last um, modern hundred year years of history. And I wanted to talk about her life. And while I was writing for that for her she passed away in a very dramatic way um so that was very devastating um and i was writing about my mom i was you know m trying to make a sweet and my mom got sick so i was like oh, life what are you doing what what are you doing to me like what do you want from me like how in what way i can respond to that like because that was like so devastating. It happened in 2020. At the end of like Christmas Eve, on Christmas Eve 2020, my, my grandma passed away. And then 2022, my um, mom got sick. So it was, it was, it started as my, you know, woman's story. And then now I really want to talk about the infinite connections that I talked about you, like when we had lunch together. So, you know, if we all go, like our ancestors, we are all from same string. Like we are all humans and we are all from the same, we are playing same species. Um, I don't know if it's Adam or Eve, but we are from, you know, one, one thing. Yeah. So in that way, we are infinitely connected. And even though we said bye to our loved ones, to another world, um, I think it's still... It's still um, infinite connections we have. Um, so I'm developing that um, stories um, for my next album. And I wanted to um, incorporate with the Korean, Korean traditional musical elements. Because I, I really think that it's fascinating how, how they um, develop their rhythm set. Mm -hmm. Let's say we don't really have like 4-4 four, four or 3-4 three, four type of thing. We do, but we have, let's say, 20 major set, something like that. Or like some kind of like combined rhythm set as one. You know, I, I, I think that rhythm is the most um, fundamental element of music cause, or melody. I mean, you can say melody or rhythm, but, you know, like... Um, all the ancestors, they, you know, found something and then just, you know, hit it and make some patterns. And that's the rhythm. Um, and I'm still learning it and um, still a lot of homework that I have to um, solve because Korean music, they don't really have harmony at all. And they have different pitch um, set. Mm -hmm. So even though we play the same do, it's not really the same pitch. Um, so... Like, um, and all the percussions, they have pitch. So it's kind of hard for me to musically um, right. incorporate those two elements. But you shall see. I'm still, I'm still getting one piece at a time, <laughs> opening. You know what came to me as you were saying that is I think that 
So many of your ancestors, known and unknown, are going to help you <laughs> find all those places. Yes, yes. From, from that space of oneness. Mm -hmm. I think uh, you're all going to be doing it together, and that's part of your, you know, your service to be able to, to, to make it real in this dimension. Yeah, I really yeah. loved the say, loved what you said um, during the lunch, and then I said, "I really want to make it good." And you said, "Doesn't really matter. You're doing it." <sighs> <laughs> That's the spirit. I'm just yeah. doing it. Yeah. And then I'm gonna do better next time. That's okay. <laughs> or not. <laughs> or not. <laughs> <laughs> just keep going. I keep, knew you were gonna say. That. <laughs> keep rowing your boat. Just keep going. Right. All right. I'm gonna put you on the spot. Okay. Rapid fire. Tell me until you can't think of anything more. We'll start with five. What do you think are five major recorded influences for your love of music? It, like, maybe I should phrase it this way. If someone was going to try and know you just through knowing what you listen to, the music how would you define yourself um <laughs> very today very cheesy and corny oh i un love it undeveloped korean pop music to give be us before give, give be us the stuff because oh, no. i want to look it up no way yes yeah, no way <laughs> yes way <laughs> no because i mean if you don't tell me now i'm gonna ask you after and then you have now i'm gonna go check it out i'm gonna email you <laughs> <laughs> But I mean, seriously, because like right now, you know, like K-pop, you know, like BTS, Blackpink, which I love Blackpink, you know, BTS, Blackpink, um, 17. I, I don't even know the names, but you know that era of the, you know, like the bloom, bloom, bloom of the K-pop. But when I grow up, it wasn't like that. All like, you know, all the musicians copied some here and there from Latin music or Brazilian harmony, uh -huh. from Japanese pop. And then at the time, it was really hard to find a record from outside of Korea. So the musicians, they, they were able to make big money out of copying. Can I say that? <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, um, so the un undeveloped Korean pop music. And then when I was young... Um, younger like much younger when i was i don't know teens um we had um kind of um ir illegal illegal hong kong channel it's called channel v that was the channel that i actually got into all the pop music like marilyn manson really? i saw the marilyn manson video i'm like <sighs> what is this? You know, he was like all naked and, you know, like crazy lens and, you know, doing some music. But I was like, oh my gosh, that's so captivating. I'm like, it kind of like uh, opened my eyes. That's how I did, discovered Bjork, you know, all the, you know, like crazy creative musicians, rock stars, even Britney Spears, you know, like everyone. And I was like, wow, that kind of world exists because I was in Korea and then only music that I was listening to was, you know, undeveloped, undeveloped Korean pop music. And I would say Hong Kong Channel V, illegal channel that I had like some antenna. Like, <laughs> That's <helped>. amazing. <laughs> yeah. I, I have a friend who uh, teaches drums in Taiwan mm -hmm. and he was telling me that uh, in Taiwan they only uh, had access to They'd never heard of the Beatles or Stevie Wonder, or but they had access to Metallica mm -hmm. and Pat Metheny, or something like or something random like that. And so they knew all of Pat Metheny's songs, and they Crazy. knew you know all of Metallica, but had never never heard of the Beatles, for example. I can relate to that. Yeah, um, yeah. I mean, aside of the Hong Kong Channel V, we all, we also had that uh, Japan Japan TV. Uh -huh. So I know all the Japan art rock. Okay. They all have like red, red hair or blue hair and this rock, which is amazing. Yeah. So like, I really didn't know what jazz was. Okay. Period. Wait, 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 wait. wait. So, so we, we got K-pop, got it. And we got... Uh, Japan I heard, rock. I, <laughs> Japan rock. I heard some Bjork right there. Mm -hmm. Okay. Awesome. Mm -hmm. I heard... Uh, what was the other one you threw in there? Marilyn Manson. <laughs> uh, no, but there was another one. There was another. I can't remember now. Okay, so so what what goes on the jazz list after you were able to listen to some um, of that? 
So, okay, uh, when, uh, I actually, the first instrument that I got into was the toy recorder, and the second one was the rock guitar. Because um, in my high school time, I really wanted to become a musician. I really wanted to explore, but I really didn't have a way. Because in Korea, not like America, we don't have school band. So it's very unusual for us to go explore music unless you're from a musical family or your parents want to go to see concerts mm. or um, if you're a music student. So, and this was in Seoul, correct? Oh, actually, I grew up in Busan. Ah, okay. so, and then I went to Seoul later. Okay. Um, but still Seoul. I don't think it's, it makes a huge difference. But anyways, um, so one day I went to the bathroom and I saw the flyer and, and say, ha, ah, hey, I'm doing a rock concert. If you are interested, come. And then I right there went to the person and, hey, I want to, I want to be a musician. Like, can you bring me where you play music? And then she brought me to a like very smelly, dirty, like underground, you know, rock, you know, kind of like... Uh, club, I would say. I mean, it was like all college students, they want to do, they want to play some like Guns N' Roses and Metallica, you know, all the names, ACDC, you know, all the, you know, like 70s, 80s pop. And then I went there and then I actually wanted to become a singer, but I was so, I was so shy. And the leader asked, what do you want to play? And I said, I, said, I want to play guitar. <laughs> and then I bought a guitar I, did, I, I went there every single day, um, like really dirty, like, you know, couch I sat on and then playing guitar, like by my ear, I picked up all the notes and then, you know, mm -hmm. made my, some mem like made my own notation. I didn't even know like so, so, uh, like I didn't even try to notate that just like some random, you know, like shape. And then I memorized all the notes and play guitar. Um, that was my first musical experience. Mm. And then, yeah, I went to a university as a singer after some, you know, stories. And <laughs> <laughs> I came to Berkeley College of Music. I heard the music, big band music. I was like, this is the music that I really want to, you know, spend my lifetime with. Um, and then next I developed um, some legends, you know, just like we all love Duke Ellington and Maria Schneider and Jim McNeely some Thad Jones music, um, some, um, some recordings really, um, I really loved, but not like, one thing really shocked me was I was in the harmony class and he played some Oscar Peterson solo and then a person sitting next to me just sang all the solos by memory and then I'm like, how can you do that? Oh, that's the music that my grandma used to listen to. <sighs> A culture shock. <laughs> so I think at the moment, I realized that I will never ever be like them because mm -hmm. I don't have the swing, that, that musical legacy in my gene. So I wouldn't even try to be one of them. I'm going to be myself. Yeah. And just because, you know, sometimes I feel... Um, a little sorry about myself being not so, being not from a musical, musically um, advantaged family, or like I didn't have the musical advantage at a young age. But, you know, I lived my life differently. And maybe that was also, um, you know, there, there was another purpose of me to bring new form of music to the world. Um, so, you know, like when someone says, your music sounds so fresh, I'm like, I don't even try. It's just, it just comes out as it is, you know? Yeah. What, yeah. And, and it's what you see as a challenge, right? Is actually your gift mm -hmm. because that's what caught my ear when I heard your music. I said, there's something different here. Mm. You know, it's, it's the, it's the soul, the spirit inside, but then all, of course, the, everything that you've experienced in your life that goes into that is like that's that's something different. And then I was very fortunate to have teachers and mentors saying, "Just write what you hear." Yeah. If someone says that's not the way, you know, that's not the tradition. 
you should do that or you shouldn't do that. If I met that kind of teacher or mentors, I don't think I would be, probably I would because I'm saying, <laughs> I don't listen to you. I'm just going to do my own way. <laughs> but, but fortunately, they were, um, they were encouraging on what I do and I was fortunate. And and we were talking about that before, the the role of the teacher. It's yeah. it's so so important. You know, just just those couple little words of encouragement every once in a while is like you be you. Mm-hmm. Um or, you know, what you're doing is is definitely on track. Just just keep rowing your boat. Or even just as we also talked about you being the example that you are to say, okay, Jihe is doing her thing, maybe I can do my thing too in mm-hmm. a different way. Yeah, I mean, that question I already oh, I always had was can music be taught? Mm. I mean, I don't know. I mean, everybody like teachers can offer things and, you know, like um maybe show the different worlds so that they can actually explore. But we always find our like we all have our own own beauty that we see Mm -hmm. like we always want to document things that we see beauty in and it's just from our own life and experience or own taste and who can correct that who can come say like the the beauty you see is not beautiful like no one can say that so in the way i don't know if someone can say this harmony is better than the other or this melody is better than the other you you have to be true to your own view of beauty and then you just document it or you just create it but teacher's role might be just you know be on their side and just encourage them or just trying just helping them to see you know the more things the bigger world so but thanks for you thanks to you like you are you're here in Miami for a decade and then just you know be the person all the students can come and have some get some advices and encouragement yes well we're, we're all taking care of each other as, <laughs> as it is all one you know mm-hmm. we're all feeding into each other's experiences mm-hmm. in this beautiful mirror <laughs> <laughs> um gee i want to thank you for for sitting down with me today and you are doing fantastic. I was like moving my legs here and there, and then you were still. <laughs> <laughs> you are more Asian than me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> I appreciate that, and and I wish you every dream coming true, every door that opens. Let it be as vivid <laughs> as possible. Right on. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll see you on the other side. Thank you so much, John. Thank you for your spirit. You know it's. Just so great to have you have someone like you in this in this world in this scene. Thank you. Thank you. Much gratitude, everyone, for checking out the podcast. Please just subscribe and follow and like and add a comment, as it really helps us expand and grow uh, and keep us all connected together. So I appreciate it very much, and I send you much, much, much love. I'll see you on the next one. <laughs>